Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. We give God thanks for another day. We thank Him for His love, His mercy, and His grace. Hallelujah. We are concluding the book of Acts, chapter 12, this morning, by God's grace. Uh, we have come so far by seeing the power of God, the move of God, upon His anointed one, Peter. Uh, as we see the devil was about to sift him and do things with him through Herod uh, who was trying to look for political advantages and we can see here after God has humiliated him and show him who is God and who is Lord and who is King we see here that Herod began to do some things uh, before the sight of the people and in the sight of God and for what he was doing, he would pay a heavy price for it. And this is a lesson not only for Herod in those times, but for many of us in this time and season. <laughs> Let's get into God's word. Here, yeah, verse 22 uh, to 25. And the people kept shouting the, the voice of a God and not of man. This is... The cross Herod was speaking to the people, especially to those of Tyre and Sidon that came to, 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 to see him. Because it, he has great manipulation. It was, he, Herod to me here is a form of the Antichrist, which is to come. Okay, because you see here where the Bible said the people of Tyre and Sidon depended upon him to supply the country with food. We know in these last days what's going to happen. Man. May God help me to restrain me for a minute. Because there's a lot for us to learn of this one little passage before we get into 13. Verse 23, Then immediately an angel of the Lord struck him because he did not give glory to God. And he was eaten by worms and died. But the word of God grew and multiplied. And Barnabas and Saul returned from Jerusalem when they had fulfilled their ministry. And they also took with them John, whose surname was Mark. There's a lot of things going on in our society nowadays. We've seen it, we heard it. Even lately, there's a concert with this young man, whom, which people, and these lot of young people that said died at this concert. There is a spirit of the Antichrist, but it's a spirit of God-like spirit that's going on. It's a spirit that is moving wherein people are acting God-like. They want all the glory, they want all the praise for themselves. And they, they are addicted to it. And they will go to great length to the fact that many of them will say there is no God, they are the God. Mm -hmm. This is going on in our society as we speak. Many of our entertainers and those in the industries are making it blatantly and saying it blatantly out of their mouth. They are God. So if they are God, there's no God. And this type of God-like nature, nature, this type of God-like uh, personalities are, are people who are trying to suck on the worship. And uh, this is what you call uh, idolatry in your face. Wherein you find now we're in people because they are because the name of Jesus Christ as they do to they, all they can to suppress the gospel message of Jesus Christ as they are doing as much as possible to get rid of the name the name of Jesus Christ what you have then after this is that you have a satanic self-righteous society and nation which all kind of demonic activities are becoming rampant. All kind of mercilessly, insensitive, cold murder, violence, chaos, confusion begin to take over the atmosphere. Because God and the name of Jesus Christ is no more in it. And that's what we are facing. We are facing now in our societies. Every time you turn on a newspaper, the, 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 the news, you see these things are happening. 
You see these people who are playing these roles. I come to tell you, it's not new. It's not new. Here we see Herod. <laughs> after God has humbled him. Let me put it to you like this. After God has humbled him. You say, how did God humble him? If you go back to the early part of the verses, you see where he was trying to get the glory and the attention of the Jewish people. And he wanted to use Peter as a pawn to get the adoration and to get the favor of the Jews on his side. This is an egotistical maniac. He loves power. He loves glory. So here, as he was planning, I mean, the man has planned this thing down to the T. And he had, um, probably, if, if he, during those time as a king, he would have probably ruled over the, the internet and ruled over CNN and all the medias and mediums. And it would be a, an announcement because he already have Peter locked up in prison. So it would be a big announcement for tomorrow, you know, what he was about to do with Peter to make him a spectacle before the world. But God steps in and reverse all of that plan that he was planning on all of what he was about to do. God stepped in and showed him who is God and who is Lord and reverse it on him. He is humiliated. He has to do something to try to reestablish himself, to regain the glory that he think he has, not realizing God is the one who puts him in power. The Bible teaches us that. Every leader in power and authority, God places you there. So if he puts you there, he can take you out as well. Because the Bible said you are there, every leader who are in power in nations, God put you there, you are there for judgment and for the authority of the people to keep things in line. But when you begin to get into the face of God and be disrespectful and be dishonoring of him and not give him glory, there's a price to pay. And I will say this as we, come, as we go into this passage. Never ever try to shut down the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is the only message that will save you, your nations, and your people. And i never seen anyone live long enough that they're to try, who have it in their intentions, in, in their heart, in their mind, to eradicate the name of Jesus Christ, and to eradicate the gospel. You never live long. I promise you that. You are what is called a stumbling block. And God remove every stumbling block beloved. You are dust. So as we see Herod here now trying to re-establish himself. Because he has been humiliated. God has shown him who is God. And the Bible let us know we can't touch God's anointed. Or cause his prophets no harm. You don't dare to do that. It's safer for you to just leave him alone and go about your daily business. So here we see wherein he began to speak. The Bible said, you know, oration. Give an oration to them. An oration is, is, uh, is like what you call a great speaker. <laughs> so I always tell my wife, you got to be careful of people, you know, who, and personalities. Because, you know... You, you have these people who, they know, I'm going to tell you now about them. They know that they have the personality, the presentation. That means that when they, when they show up, they know, they have the confidence, full confidence that they have the personality which first make people admire them. And two, they know they have built, they have the ability and the mastery and craftiness of words so that when they speak it, they know the effect it's going to have. So I'm pretty sure on this day, after all of the humiliation with uh, Herod, I am pretty sure he was in council with those, like with most president. A lot of prep people don't know this, but most president, they do not, when they come to speak to the people, they do not speak freely. They have speech writers. 
right? They have speech writers who behind back doors they are they they they, they, they are taught, Mr. President, this is how you gotta say it to the people, they line by line and so that when he when a president comes out to speak to the people, what they, they are speaking is what they are taught to speak to so that it can have the effect it need to have on the people. These are trained professionals who understand what the people need to hear and want to hear so that the people, by the time they finish speaking, the people will applauding them and, you know, just, just, just begin to adore them and begin to, be, you know, you know, you are the greatest, you are the same, you, you know, this is what was happening here with, with, with Herod. Just like last night I was listening to a man of God and I never knew this in all my life. I never knew this, like, that social media, they have what is called, people called uh, uh, attention engineers. I don't know, maybe you may have heard of that, but I, this is the first time I heard. These are people, professionals who are trained in psychology, in understanding what draws people attention and how to get their attention so they can manipulate and control their minds so that people are addicted to social media. I hear something comes in my, my spirit that say it's the same as uh, what they call the thing they put in food. Um, what they call the thing they put in food? Baby, baby. MSG. MSG. <laughs> huh? It's that taste, but you just want to go back for more. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when I heard that, I was like, whoa, attention engineers. So these people know exactly what they're doing. Herod here knows exactly what he was doing. It's almost like as if he want to put his hand in the face of God and say, you're not God, I am God. And the Bible goes on to here to say, when the people began to praise him and shout, the voice of a God and not of man. Verse 23, then immediately, I believe in some other scriptures, it says, and because he give not God the glory. Listen to this. My older version of scripture, it says, and because he did not give God the glory. Beloved, there are people who do things to get the attention of others. It's like they are addicted. A lot of people on social media are doing this. They do things because they love the attention, the, 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 the amount of likes they get, the amount of attention, they, and they crave it. They crave all the attention they get when people applaud them, compliment them, say all kind of nice things. It's, it, 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 they, 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 they suck on that. They, they, they live off of that. So therefore, so, so, and, and so therefore once, once it, they will do anything and if anyone dare to cross the line to, and that's a lot of time and don't, and don't give them the glory and do not get, esteem them, they almost, that person can almost become their enemy because they're not about God. Everyone is supposed to humble themselves in the, before the face of Almighty God. He is the one that gets all the glory. Whenever someone comes to you and compliments you and tells you, you know, these nice things about you, and all that, say to God, be the glory. Practice it. Say to God, be the glory. Oh, you look nice to them. Oh, to God, be the glory. Practice it from those simple, simple little things. You're beautiful, you're wonderful, you're handsome. To God, be the glory. Because when you take that place of humility for God, because God is watching you. And he knows he's the one who makes you healthy. He's the one who makes you look so, he is the one. But when you begin to feed on these things and begin to absorb it and does not in your heart give glory and honor to God, after a while you can become vain. As the preacher would say in the book of Ecclesiastes, vanity upon vanity, all is vanity. You will have to practice in the most simplest of way. In every matter, you are, you, you are doing something for, for someone and they be thinking, to God be the glory. Always choose to take that path. 
If you forget, there's nothing wrong. Just by, just by yourself or somewhere. God will remind you. Don't be too caught up into that. Don't soak that up too much. Because the Bible teaches us God gave not his glory or share not his glory with none. So when you begin to divide up the people and you be and a, a man of, of, of like error of great influence begin to oh, shut God out and begin to get gain the people's attention so much so that the people begin to call him a God. There's a price to pay, beloved. There's a serious, serious price to pay. And the Bible is setting examples here for many of us who are seeking the glory, seeking the praise of other humans, men, women alike. They are so absorbed. Everything they do is to get attention. You're making yourself an idol. You're making yourself like unto God. Your intention is not about how can I please God. Your intention is to get attention. And to get attention of people it means that you are operating in a satanic manner. Because the devil from the beginning wanted to get all of God's glory. He wanted to take the position of God. And he has came down to earth. And he is working through many that's why we have to stay in God's word and remain in God's word and be consistent and be like a warrior to know God's word so we can stand in God's word and understand the sneer and tactics of the deception, the deceptive one, the devil. He loves when you are ignorant to this, when you have no knowledge of it. There's a lot of people who knew some scripture and they mix it with their ideology. And you can't tell them nothing. So when you learn to stand on God's word. And you know God's word. And you see examples like this. You learn something here. That no matter what it is. By, by God chasing of you. Because God. The Bible says something. Chase those who he love. When you know God and is on you. Whether by by by. by, by fire or by whatever is doing with your life to bring you into submission or to bring you to, to a place wherein you learn to give him all the glory don't fight back whatever you do don't fight back whatever you do do not fight back don't get angry with god don't don't put your hand in his face or turn your back on him and begin to play god is a price to pay. You are dust. So here we see Herod now trying to flip the script of his humiliation to exaltation. So he gives this great speech and the people begin to look at him and you are the man. You are the one. Ain't, ain't no one like you. You are the one. And I'm pretty sure in that moment, God probably speak to him. Give me the glory. But because he's angry, he refuses to give God the glory. In that moment, in that very moment. Uh, uh, yes, thank you, Lord. There's a passage in the Old Testament when God speak to Moses and told him to stroke the rock, to speak to the rock, sorry. And Moses, out of his anger, struck it and not speak to it. And God says to Moses, listen to this, because you did not hollow me before the people, you will not make it to the promised land. Mm -hmm. When you are a great leader, an influencer, and you know you are influencing your leader over many people, there are moments when you're going to be challenged, <laughs> tempted. 
But when the command is of God and you know it is of God, obey, beloved. Please, obey. To obey is life, long life. To disobey is a price. And the price, when God put his hand or his wrath on you, it, the price is heavy. The price is heavy. So it is the same thing here with Herod. Because he did not allow God or give God glory. Let's see what happens to him. Because no one wants this to happen to them before the highs of the people. And many of you uh, influencers, musicians, and artists who are impacting the lives of millions will have the opportunity to give God glory before these people. And are taking it for yourself? Follow me in this passage I'm about to read to you. We are in Acts chapter 12. Follow me in this. Then immediately, verse 23 of Acts 12, follow me. Then immediately an angel of the Lord struck him because he did not give God, give glory to God. And he was eaten by worms and died before all these people. I see all these people that was praising him, saying, oh, this is the voice of a God and all this kind of... I'm pretty sure when this happened, they're probably like, oh. Their praise, their praise went from praising to sorrow and grief. God is God. You and I is dust. Don't let anyone flatter you, compliment you. And swell your head up so much. That's why it's good to be, find your esteem and security in God. So that when men or, and women, or no matter who it is, come and begin to say things to you. Pass it on to the Lord. Because you know whatever they're saying about you that is good. It's because of the Lord's blessing upon your life. Because as humanity, there's nothing good about us. There's nothing wonderful about us. It is of the goodness of God upon our lives. So you leaders, and many of you, read this passage over and over. And make sure you give God the glory and all the honor. So verse 24 and verse 25 conclude by saying, But the word of God grew and multiplied. Ever since I'm going through this book of Acts, they tried to shut down the gospel in the name of Jesus Christ by, by killing Stephen first. And the Bible said when they killed Stephen, what happened? The message multiplied, began to increase. God put those to shame who was trying to shut the gospel message down. Every time they tried to do something to an anointed of God. And here we come down to Herod now. Oh, it's a big, huge, he ain't even a rock. He's a mountain of a stumbling block. Because <laughs> he's a king. He means he, he has great influence and power. And he was like the last one. And it's amazing the disgrace that God did with him. And the Bible said, after God done with him or remove him, what happened here? And the word of God grew and multiplied. Don't try to shut down the gospel of salvation, beloved. Don't try to shut down and get rid of the name of Jesus Christ that save souls from hell. Don't stand in the way of Almighty God and His work. You will pay a price. God remove Him and His word continue to go forth. You can end it for a while, but you're going to go forth. God work what God will always achieve whatever is for to do because he is God. And the Bible says in verse, the last verse, and Barnabas and Saul returned from, returned from Jerusalem when they had fulfilled their ministry and they took with them John, whose surname was Mark. So now we see, now we know, don't play with God. Don't play God. Give him all the glory in your life. That's the greatest thing you could ever do. No matter how tempted you are to take it unto yourself. 
and smile about it and laugh about it. And yeah, go do that. Pass down the dog to God be the glory. When you do that, you will live long. Do not do that. There's a price to pay. May God bless you. As we continue the journey tomorrow, beloved, we start verse 13. By God's grace and by God's mercy, may God bless you. May you walk in the spirit. May you walk humbly before Almighty God, giving him all the glory, beloved, in your life so that he be the one that exalts you. And even when he exalts you, you still stay humble and say, Father, thank you for this, but this belongs to you. <laughs> because, hey, it is better to be governed by the spirit of Almighty God upon your life than you at any time to be taking things personal. I want to do it on your own. It's not good. Mm -mm, I'm telling you right now. As I read, it's not good. Okay? So stay humble, Lord. May the Holy Spirit lead and guide your beloved, giving God the glory to him by every step you make, everything you do with your hands, and everything you say out of your mouth. May God bless you. Walk in the Spirit, see in the Spirit, and protect your ear and beloved, and make sure it is God who is ministering to you according to his holy word. Amen? Until we meet again.